morning and welcome to our first Friday Mass. Please stand as we worship our good God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the feast day of St. Charles Borromeo. So uh, anybody who's a parishioner at St. Charles, this is your patron feast day. He was a te really good teacher, and he helped everybody to understand that... Um, God was always wanting to do something in our souls to bless us. So for those times when we have paid little attention, brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Preserve in the midst of your people, we ask, O Lord, the spirit with which you filled the bishop, St. Charles Borromeo, that your church may be constantly renewed, and by conforming herself to the likeness of Christ, may show his face to the world, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Join with others in being imitators of me, brothers and sisters, and observe those who conduct themselves according to the model you have in us. For many, as I have told you, and now tell you even in tears, conduct themselves as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction. Their God is their stomach, their glory is in their shame. Their minds are occupied with earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven. And from it, we also await a savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will change our lowly body to conform with his glorified body by the power that enables him also to bring all things into subjection to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and my crown, in this way stand firm in the Lord, beloved. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm, and the response is, let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing house of the Lord. I rejoiced because they said to me, 
We will go to the house of the Lord. And now we have set foot within your gates, O Jerusalem. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Jerusalem, built as a city with compact unity, to it the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. According to the decree for Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord, in it are set up judgment seats, seats for the house of David. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, A rich man had a steward who was reported to him for squandering his property. He summoned him and said, What is this I hear about you? Prepare a full account of your stewardship because you can no longer be my steward. The steward said to himself, What shall I do, now that my master is taking the position of steward away from me? I am not strong enough to dig, and I am ashamed to beg. I know what I shall do, so that when I am removed from the stewardship, they may welcome me into their homes. He called in his master's debtors, one by one, and to the first he said, How much do you owe my master? He replied, One hundred measures of olive oil. He said to him, Here is your promissory note. Sit down and quickly write one for fifty. Then another said, And how much do you owe? He replied, One hundred measures of wheat. And he said to him, Here is your promissory note. Write one for eighty. And the master commended that dishonest steward for acting prudently. For the children of this world are more prudent in dealing with their own generation than the children of light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So I'm going to teach you a a phrase. Some of you might already know this, but this is a a phrase that Catholics used to always say all the time, but many of us have forgotten because we just didn't use it for a long time. Um, But it's why we celebrate Mass on the first Friday of the month together. And it's the phrase is, Jesus, meek and humble of heart, make my heart like unto thy own. Can you guys say that with me? Jesus meek and humble of heart, make my heart like unto thy own. Isn't that a nice, beautiful little prayer? It's something that you can say anytime you want, Um, but especially on Fridays, we remember our Lord's passion and death for us out of love so that we could be reunited with his love. We want our hearts to be more like his. Did you guys hear the gospel today? Is this guy a good guy or a bad guy? He's, yeah, he's bad, and he's because he's he's stealing. But Jesus tells him, Master, praise this guy not because he's dishonest, not because he's stealing, but because he's prudent. And so, what's this guy doing? Like, if imagine you guys all owed me a thousand dollars, and uh, and then I said, you know, what? no, let's say you owed somebody church, $1,000, but I said, you know what, I- I'm kind of the boss here, you only owe 
Would you guys be like, we like Father Matt? Yeah, yeah that's what this guy's doing. So he's, he's being very prudent because he's going to get kicked out of his spot. And so he wants other people to be nice to him. And even if he's stealing, that's a very prudent move. And what prudence is, is it's a, it's a we, decide, we take a look at what needs to happen. We make a decision about what's going to be best. And then we act on it. And prudence is all about right action. So now how do we be prudent? Well, I was listening to the first reading from Philippians, and it says some people have made themselves enemies of the cross of Christ. And I was thinking about that. Jesus died on the cross because he likes pain or anything like that, but because he wants us to know that he loves us. I, I, I'm willing to die loving you rather than for you to think for one moment that I don't love you. That's what the cross says. And I don't want to be an enemy of that. But when you guys suffer, do you really like it? No, I don't either. Things annoy me sometimes. Um, but I don't want to reject what God is going to do for me. I don't want to reject suffering. I want to make good use of it. In this month of November, of course, we, want, we celebrate. What's the holiday we celebrate in November? Yeah, Thanksgiving. We want to be thankful. <laughs> we want to thank people. Uh, but I want to do what I noticed in my life when I was praying about how I can be distracted into complaining or I can get focused only on the bad that is happening and I forget the good that is happening even in a hard situation. And the Lord just kind of let me know this morning that some things that I need to do to be prudent are when I get kind of stressed out and need to relax, I pull out my phone and I watch YouTube. Does anybody else ever do that? Four or five of us. But I also know the Lord wants to do something for me. He, he wants me to spend time with him. He's calling me to, instead of spending more time on YouTube, to spend more time praying, to spend more time reading good books, spending, spending more time going out and serving other people, and doing something thoughtful for somebody else rather than just something thoughtful for myself. Um, now, how many of you, when you're stressed out, think, you know what's really going to help me out right now? Being silent and praying. Is that, how many people think that? really five or six. <laughs> it's hard sometimes to think that that's the right choice, but that's the prudent choice. The last thing I'll, I'll say is this. I was with my friend, um, and he had a daughter. Do you guys have chores? Yeah. Um, her job, they have, a, they have two dogs, and, and her job is to clean up in the yard after the dogs, right? And so she... He asked, he got home from work one day and he asked her, hey, did you, uh, did you clean up after the dogs? And she's like, no, I didn't. And, and I'm, I'm sorry, Dad. And, and he said to her, not mean, but, it, but he said to her, I need you to be sorry enough to change the way you're acting. I need, I need you to be sorry enough to do something about it. She's like, I know, Dad. And, and, she, and he said, so how long has it been since you last did your chore and cleaned up after the dogs? It's been a couple weeks, Dad. So what do you think the yard was like? Yeah. D does she need to do her chores? Is saying sorry going to change that? No, it's a start to be sorry, but she needs to be sorry enough to change it. So the next day, we got up, she was out there doing her chores. And I said to my buddy, hey, look. She's sorry to do something about it. What? And he's like, she's doing her chores. Yeah. She only does it where we can see it. She doesn't do it where <laughs> she doesn't do the whole yard. <laughs> so is she, is she making a good step? It's a good prudent step. Um, does she have more to go? 
Yeah. Okay, good. So you guys got the lesson today. So today we pray, Jesus, make my heart like unto thy own. And we, then now we want to make the prudent steps to do something about it. Not just say it, but to do it. Something that will make my heart more like Jesus's. Brothers and sisters, let us stand and offer our prayers to our good God. For our leaders in the church, that their exemplary, exemplary lives may reveal Christ and that they may help us to stand firm in the Lord, we pray to the Lord. For our leaders who occupy the judgment seats in the world, especially, who's are, especially those who are Christian, that they may remember that their true citizenship is in heaven and work to build up peace and justice on earth. We pray to the Lord. For those who are skilled in taking initiative in the affairs of commerce, that they may apply their good business sense to investing in wealth that will last forever by sharing their riches as Jesus commands us. We pray to the Lord. For all the sick, the poor, the forgotten, elderly, the prisoners, and all who need our prayers, that this holy sacrifice may lighten their burdens and bring them joy of heart. We pray to the Lord. For our beloved dead, especially for all unnamed soldiers for whom this Mass is offered, that they may go up with rejoicing to the house of the Lord and through the intercession of St. Charles Borromeo, take their place forever in the heavenly Jerusalem. We pray to the Lord. Father, we thank you for your goodness to us. We ask that you help us to be prudent, that our hearts really would become more like your own. And we ask for your special blessing today on the parish and all the parishioners of St. Charles Parish, who is our neighbor and our friend. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look, O Lord, upon the offering placed on your altar in commemoration of St. Charles and grant by the power of this sacrifice that as you have made him an attentive pastor, outstanding in the merit of his virtues, so you may make us abound in good fruit by our works through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Charles Borromeo you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe and answer to his prayers. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim... Blessed be Jesus, whom you sent to be the friend of children and of the poor. He came to show us how we can love you, Father, by loving one another. He came to take away sin, which keeps us from being friends, and hate, which makes us all unhappy. He promised to send the Holy Spirit to be with us always, so that we can live as your children. God our Father, we now ask you to send your Holy Spirit to change these gifts of bread and wine into the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. The night before he died, Jesus, your son, showed us how much you love us. When he was at supper with his disciples, he took bread and gave you thanks and praise. Then he broke the bread, gave it to his friends and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, Jesus took the cup that was filled with wine. He thanked you, gave it to his friends, and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. And 
And so, loving Father, we remember that Jesus died and rose again to save the world. He put himself into our hands to be the sacrifice we offer you. Lord our God, listen to our prayer. Send the Holy Spirit to all of us who share in this meal. May this Spirit bring us closer together in the family of the church with Francis our Pope, Alexander our Bishop, Peter his assistant bishop, all other bishops, and all who serve your people. Remember, Father, our families and friends and all those we do not love as we should. Remember those who have died. Bring them home to you to be with you forever. Gather us all together into your kingdom. There we shall be happy forever with the Virgin Mary, Mother of God and our Mother, and with Blessed Joseph, her spouse. There all the friends of Jesus the Lord will sing a song of joy. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is Yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb.
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. It was not you who chose me, says the Lord, but I who chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last.
Let us pray. May the sacred mysteries of which we have partaken, O Lord, we pray, give us that determination which made St. Charles faithful in ministry and fervent in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Special day wishes for Mrs. Johnson and Mrs. Coonrath and anybody else who's from St. Charles Parish. We're so glad that you come and share your gifts even with us at St. Rose Parish. But happy feast day. Now, see... You guys remember what I said? What's that prayer we, we say on, fri on fr especially on Fridays? Jesus, meek and humble of heart, make my heart like unto thy own. Good. And do you remember what my buddy said to his daughter? I need you to be... I need you to be sorry enough to what? To do something about it, to change your behavior. So teachers, I just gave you a giant brick of gold. <laughs> Every kid in here knows that we want to pray all the time, Jesus, meek and humble of heart, make my heart like unto thy own. But also, we're not quite doing that. And we say we're sorry. We also need to be sorry enough <laughs> to do something about it. All right, good. So I hope that that maybe is a a lesson that all of us can take uh, for not just a day, but for a year and a lifetime. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. For a culture of life and respect for the dignity of every human person in our state and country and for healing in our church, we pray, St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. St. Rose of Lima and St. Martin de Porres. St. Charles Borromeo. St. Joseph. Shout to the Lord.